So in today's video, I'm going to share what I've discovered about this supplement, especially formulated for women at menopause, whether they work and whether they can actually support estrogen levels to improve menopause symptoms. If you're new here, my name is Shirley and I have a three-year diploma in nutritional therapy. And on this channel, I share information about how to manage your menopause symptoms through your diet and lifestyle, whether you want to go through menopause naturally or whether you're already taking HRT and you just want to support your health better. So if this is the sort of information that you're looking for, consider subscribing. So you've probably seen that a lot of these supplements for women at menopause include either red clover, sage, like cohosh, or soy isoflavones. And basically, the reason that these supplements are formulated for women at menopause is because they contain phytoestrogens. And what are phytoestrogens? Basically, phytoestrogens are plant compounds that create an estrogen-like reaction in our bodies. So there are actually three types of phytoestrogens that are being used in the supplements. And one of the most popular ones, if you've looked through those supplement shelves, is the ones made with soy. And the reason for that is because it's been found that a lot of women in China and Japan actually have a lot less menopause symptoms because they have about 15 or to 50 grams of soy product as part of their normal diet. And that's why soy is one of the more popular isoflavones or phytoestrogens being used in supplements especially formulated for women at menopause. So why are phytoestrogens being used in these menopause supplements? Well basically phytoestrogens actually are compounds that are similar to our natural estrogens in our body and they work by binding with our natural estrogen receptors. But before you go out and buy yourself some supplements to support lower estrogen levels, let's have a look at what I've found in the research. When you take these supplements, they get digested and absorbed in the small intestines. And what happens is that the bacteria in your gut then creates a compound called Equal, which is then the compound that actually binds to your estrogen receptors to create an estrogen-like reaction in your body. However, because these supplements do contain high amounts of phytoestrogens, there are things that we need to be aware of before you do start taking these supplements. So let's have a look at one of the positives that I've found. In this literature review, it was found that in some human studies, phytoestrogens lowered the risk of osteoporosis, improved brain function and reduced menopause symptoms by affecting the endocrine and other body systems. However, this same literature review also found that these results may have been overestimated. And in fact, phytoestrogens actually created hormone imbalances. So why are the results so conflicting? That's because the benefits gained by some women really depend on a lot of factors, including the level of gut bacteria that they have. And this is one of the really important factors that I found in the research that I looked through is that 50% of Asian women and only 20% of Caucasian women actually were able to produce this compound called the equal, equal, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. And this is the difference between those women who benefited from taking the phytoestrogens and those who don't. So it's really important that we have a good balance of bacteria to be able to break down the phytoestrogens or the supplements enough 
to be able to produce this compound that then binds with our estrogen receptors and create the estrogen-like reactions in our body. The other factors that affect whether you will actually benefit from these phytoestrogens is the amount of phytoestrogen you're taking, what phytoestrogens you're actually taking, how much of the bioavailable compound you're absorbing, and bioavailability means how much of the active compounds your body is able to break down and absorb. And then there's also the other factors of age, ethnicity, and how healthy the individual is. So it just goes to show that taking these supplements, especially formulated for women at menopause, may not be as easy as just popping a pill. And from the research I've done, there's also other things that you may need to be aware of before taking these supplements. That is that we have different types of estrogen receptors in our body. And whereas our natural estrogen is able to bind with the specific receptors in specific organs or body systems, the active ingredients in these supplements are more likely to bind with your beta estrogen receptors as opposed to the alpha or all the other estrogen receptors we have in our body. And you may be thinking, well, so what? Now, you've got to remember that all the receptors that we have in our body when it comes to estrogen or other hormones are there to balance our, our body. And when the metabolites bind with our beta estrogen receptors, it may be causing a different reaction in the other different organs. And that may be why some women actually want benefit from taking the supplements two, may not benefit from taking the supplements, and three, that may be why some symptoms actually get better and why some symptoms get worse. So there's lots of factors to consider when taking these supplements. So in some of the studies, they find that phytoestrogens actually interfered with the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and the sexual organs or the gonads and this actually caused um, a hormone imbalance instead of doing the job that it's supposed to do and to promote hormone balance or support lower estrogen. In a small study they actually found that this disruption in the balance of the communication between the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and the gonads resulted in lower estrogen and progesterone levels when they tested the subject's urine samples. So you can see that there's a lot of considerations that we need to look at when taking these supplements. And it's not as simple as popping a pill. So another factor worth considering is the fact that although we do have a smaller amount of estrogen or other hormones in menopause, we may still be producing those hormones naturally. And if we're taking supplements that are binding with our natural estrogen receptors, what is happening with the actual estrogen or other hormones that we're naturally producing? And one of the things that we have to remember in that is if your estrogen receptors are basically blocked with this compound that's binding with them, our natural hormones will just be circulating in our body. And this may be an issue of estrogen dominance for some women. So it's really important to find this delicate balance so that's one other thing that is worth thinking about. So for me, in conclusion, from the literature that I've looked at, there is actually no conclusive evidence that these supplements work in order to support lower estrogen levels. And 
they don't really even know what part of these phytoestrogens that they're looking at is the actual active ingredient that may be supporting oestrogen levels. From my personal experience, I did try black cohosh because I was at a point where I wasn't sleeping and my moods were really low and I just felt depressed. So I was at that point where I thought I need help, but I just wasn't willing to go next to that next step of taking hormone replacement. Now this may be different for you and you may want to take HRT and I've always said I think every woman has to make that choice for herself. Whatever I experience or whatever information I share is just that and it's really important that you go and see your doctor or a healthcare professional to make sure you're doing what's right for you and what will give you the relief. So when it came to taking the black cohosh, admittedly, I didn't feel any different whatsoever. And I wasn't prepared to spend £20 a month on something that, for me, provided very little benefit. And in fact, although, yes, I do promote eating healthy and healthy lifestyle to to support you through the menopause transition. The reason I say that is because from a personal perspective, I actually found that by making changes to my diet, eating specific foods such as cruciferous vegetables, oily fish and things like that, really helped me to improve my moods, how I felt within myself. And because that was a faster result for me, I can literally from one menstrual cycle to the next, I felt so much better. So that's why I am a promoter of diet and lifestyle. But like I said, we're all different. So we all have to do what's different, what's good for us. Um, so that's my experience. Now, the other thing we have to remember is that these phytoestrogens are actually present in the foods that we would eat anyway. So when it comes to isoflavones, they're found mostly in beans, lentils, legumes, and most of all in soy products. But be aware that when it comes to soy products, you really are talking about soy in their most natural form. So we're talking about natto, edamame, miso, tofu, and all those sort of soy products, as opposed to the, the soy, the fake soy products that you get in some alternative to meat and things like that. So that's where you can find isoflavones beans, lentils, legumes and natural soy products. When it comes to lignans, you'll find them in seeds just as flax, sunflower, poppy and sesame seeds. You'll also find lignans in whole grains such as rye, oats and barley. And when it comes to fruits, berries are the most abundant in lignans. Again, when it comes to vegetables, you've got the cruciferous type vegetables where you'll find a lot of lignans. So we're talking about broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage and cruciferous vegetables. So when it comes to tea and coffee, yes, we can get lignans or these phytoestrogens from tea and coffee. But I think we do have to limit them because of their caffeine content. When it comes to comestans, again, it's the broccolis and the cruciferous vegetables that you may find these phytoestrogens in. And I think that's the one consideration when thinking about these, getting these phytoestrogens, the difference between the supplements and taking them naturally from our food is because when we're eating whole foods we've actually got the fiber and the other 
vitamins and minerals and other nutrients naturally from our food. So by increasing whole foods in our diet that contain these phytoestrogens naturally, you may find that your menopause symptoms ease sufficiently. Now, if you'd like to know what I add in my diet or what I eat as part of my diet to help control and minimize my menopause symptoms, check out these videos. Or if menopause anxiety is your main concern at the moment, check out this video on how magnesium can help you calm your anxiety so your moods are more balanced and you're able to relax for sleep. And I'll see you in the next video.